Hi, I'm Dave Robertson from Wormwise and we're on a property in North Otago with Bella and Isaac Milne and we're just going to be talking about the uh, whole farm system of internal parasite management. We're just going to look at uh, avoiding the worms, how they integrate stock to clean up pasture, how they uh, provide refugia, what they monitor in terms of parasite buildup, and uh, how they choose an effective drench. Okay, Isaac, so on point one of avoiding the worms, how have you gone about ensuring lambs are not ingesting high levels of parasite larvae through the summer of this? Well, historically we've been um, grazing our lambs on permanent pasture through the summer autumn period, and um, we're changing to using summer and autumn forage fresher crops um, to reduce the amount of larvae that they consume. Um, which in turn should mean that they get better weight gains and uh, less drench. Right, on point two of integrating other classes of stock into your system, uh, there's obviously times of the year where lambs will go on grass and contaminate that area with uh, cheap parasites. How do you go about cleaning those areas up? Uh, we run our R2 cattle um, through our permanent pasture paddocks, um, which means they clean up the larvae that is on there, um, and we also cut baleage uh, off permanent pasture paddocks through to the late spring, early summer to tidy them up um, before the new season lambs come in. So it's good for improving the pasture quality and removing sheep worms. How do you go about ensuring that you don't get resistant sheep parasites emerging in those clean areas, Bella? Yeah, so we bring um, annual view, uh, annual draft views down into the system um, and have them go in behind the land. So they're obviously net removers of worms and yeah, put some of those susceptible worms back into the population to dilute down what's there. So those ewes you're bringing in, they, they wouldn't have had a lot of drenching? No, no they haven't and yeah, you think about it at pre-land and Ahead for the spring and summer. So you have undrenched ewes that you're consciously thinking about pre-land that they're going to do a job for you in the summer, autumn in terms of providing some refugia. Yep, yep. So we've done point three on refugia. Uh, now we just wanted to talk about how they use monitoring with egg counts. Uh, there's sort of two types of egg counting you can do. There's uh, C what active level of parasite levels are in your flock. So Isaac and Bella, how have you used pre-drenching egg counts in your system? Uh, so usually once we get new season lambs in and they've had their quarantine drenching clean off the farm for a month, uh, we'll do a faecal egg count um, to see what level they are at um, and whether they're needing a uh, drench. So how has it changed your drench habits using the heat counting? Uh, we've been able to lengthen the drench intervals often um, after sort of, yeah, yeah, just drench, lengthen the period between drenches. So if, if, you, if they're less than 200 eggs per gram at uh, 30 days, when would you do another count? Uh, probably a week, week after. So Bella, how have you used the post-drenching egg counting? Yeah, so we, uh, we do a post-drench egg count at 10 days after a drench and just see whether that drench has been effective and see what's been going on. And how often in a sort of a lamb finishing season would you do your 10 day checks? Probably twice in the season, unless we had any other concerns or yeah, think there's something, think something going wrong. So on point five is uh, choosing an effective drench and using it when you need to. So Isaac and Bella, how have you uh, incorporated the various drenches that we've got available and how do you make sure that you're using them effectively? Um, so we haven't been drenching with one drench type more than three times in a row. 
Uh, we're using obviously the fecal weed testing post drench to make sure that they're effective and um, using novel drenches as quarantine and in the shows of the seasons for if there's anything that shows up in uh, those drench fecal tests. So just summarising the five points and your guys' mindset to internal parasite control on your farm, where are you guys at? Yeah, I guess historically we just relied on drench to kind of do the job for us, but now it's just being smart and using those tools, kind of reducing that worm population, integrating sop, introducing infusion. And using the right monitoring and the right drench at the right time. Sounds easy.